Hi, my name is Grace Baroni, and welcome to Conversations with the ERC5. Today, I am so delighted to have with us Katie Kropka from Dementia Friendly Wilbraham. Katie, thank you so much for making time yeah, for us thank today. Thank you for having me. Because this is so important. Mm -hmm. um, we are working on uh, our age and dementia friendly designation for the town of Wilbraham. Yeah. And tell us where we're at. Sure. So we've been working on it since about September of last year. We have a committee together of local um, professionals, community members, um, businesses in town who are working to um, help educate the community and provide information on what dementia is um, and how to become a more inclusive community. And why do you think that's so important? I know why I <laughs> yeah, think it's yeah. so important. I'll let I you mean, share why you think. You know, I see it every day in my life uh, with what I do for my career. Um, it's affected. Um, I haven't had any personal experience in the family members, but I know pretty much everybody else I know does. Mm -hmm. um, it's affecting so many people, the disease, and a lot of people don't know about it. And there's a huge stigma around it. And the... Um, to be able to to share the information and to give tips and tricks and and, and provide a, them to understand and better support someone who living with dementia and their caregivers is so important. It is. It improves their quality of life, the quality of life of their caregivers, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's just being educated mm -hmm. and knowing the resources mm -hmm. that are available mm -hmm. within our communities. Exactly. Um, as we were talking earlier, my my mother has dementia. But she's thriving. Yeah. yeah. For the time being, she's thriving. And that's thanks to the senior center. Mm -hmm. That's thanks to the fact that I know who my resources mm -hmm. are to fill in the gaps where she's a little weaker. Mm -hmm. And we, we keep her at home yeah. and she's in the community and she's doing well. Mm -hmm. And everyone should have that opportunity. Exactly. And to be able to, you know, you're well aware of, of her uh, weaknesses and, and where she's thriving. And you can also understand, you know, what to expect down the line and in the future. So having the resources available now and then also knowing what resources are available in the future and, and how best to, to handle that and feel supported by the people in your community. Yes. You know, that's the whole point of this initiative. Mm -hmm. Because we have so many wonderful things available to us mm -hmm. here in the community. Mm -hmm. um, and we were talking, Stonegate Studios yeah. uh, is doing a movie night. Yeah. And then the town does the concert yeah. series. Yeah. And that is open to everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's open to those with dementia. Mm -hmm. We just have to know how to help them navigate it. Yeah. Like you said, the concert in the park, it could be really loud. So if, you know, you have an understanding, oh, my mom has dementia, but I want to bring her there. She would love that, but it might be too loud. So the, if people in town kind of understand that, maybe create a corner in the uh, area in the corner for people that's a little bit quieter, more sensory friendly. Um, just things like that, the easy things that we can do as a community to make mm -hmm. it easier for people and their families. So that everybody is still out there enjoying mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. that we have to offer. Exactly. And when we talk about that, restaurants come yeah. to mind. Mm -hmm. So why is it important for us to educate our restaurateurs yeah. out there? Yeah, I think, you know, everyone enjoys going out to eat or most people enjoy that experience. And, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to lose that just because you're a little forgetful and confused. And a lot of times people with dementia, especially in the earlier stages, will will um, become introverted and want to stay home and not want to be in the community. And their families, you know, might even feel ashamed or scared to bring them out for fear that they might have an outburst or be confused or lose their way. If, uh, you know, specifically a restaurant, if they have uh, maybe a, a menu that might be easier to read or just offering options up, um, uh, you know, easy access bathrooms. Mm -hmm. or that quiet big, corner. With big signs, the quiet corner, things like that. There, It's just, there's a million little things that you could do just to be supportive. So. Mm -hmm. And then everyone gets to enjoy. Yeah a better quality of mm -hmm. life and everything that the community exactly. has to offer. So you and Barbara at the Senior yeah. Center have received a designation. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about we, that? Yeah, Barbara Harrington uh, from the Senior Center and myself um, did a des uh, training to become Certified Dementia Friend Champion. So that means we have the ability now to certify others as dementia friends. Um, and that's where the training comes in place for local businesses because we can go to those local businesses um, and we can train the the staff members and mm -hmm. um, they can become certified dementia friends. And with that, they just, it's an hour long training. It's free. It's simple, but it, it just 
spreads information along, and then they can continue to spread that information along. So it's a cyclical pattern, and it will hopefully grow um, for more and more people that know about it. Mm -hmm. And you have a wonderful group of folks yeah. together that are moving this um, mission, yep. this initiative forward. And I wish I could think to, to name everyone, mm -hmm. um, and I apologize for forgetting. <laughs> yeah. But um, Tracy Perry yeah. is a wonderful success yeah, story, wonderful. I think. Mm -hmm. um, share with, sure. with the audience what she's doing yeah. and providing through Country Bank. Sure, yeah. Tracy Perry is with Country Bank, and she's very... Um, She's very supportive of this initiative. She's a very active commu uh, committee member, yes. and she's um, offering up our first upcoming trainings, which are coming up next Wednesday, July 24th, and we're also hosting another one on August 28th from 4 to four thirty to 530 at Country Bank on Boston Road in Wilbraham. Um, and we're going to be training her, the staff of Country Bank. Um, and other people from the community are welcome to come. We, we went around to local businesses and invited anybody to join us. Um, mm -hmm. You can just reach out to me and RSVP to me or even just show up. I'm sure we'll have, we'll have space and we're happy to share the information. And again, it's just a one hour but Tracy had told a story, and I think it was really important that, you know, she was working at the bank doing teller work when she was younger, and she noticed one of her clients that would always come up. She started noticing the confusion in them, and she wanted to be able to support them and help them, but they would come and withdraw the same amount of money every day. They'd be overdrafting. They'd be paying the same bills twice. It's those things. So Tracy was like, how do I help this person without overstepping my boundaries? How do I understand what they're going through? Should mm -hmm. I reach out to their families? What resources should I direct them to? So this is a perfect example of how becoming dementia-friendly business can um, support those in the community. Right. You know what to, to look for. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I think sometimes, um, because numbers banking someone yeah. who always was meticulous mm -hmm. with their checkbooks all of a sudden can't seem to figure things yeah. out and our our banks our teller lines are sometimes like the the first folks mm -hmm. out there to notice wow that's not how mr or mrs smith yeah. normally behaves yeah. something's a little off exactly and that's kind of what what happened with tracy exactly and and a lot of seniors you know, praise themselves on their independence and, and I want them to be independent as long as possible. And that's something that they're going to hold on and, and that and driving and other things like that. They're going to hold on to that as long as they can. But that's where you're going to start seeing the signs and, and even potentially could get an early diagnosis and, and do some clinical right. trials. There's a whole bunch of benefits to it. And because you work hand in hand with um, the Alzheimer's Association mm -hmm. And to that point, there are more and more people being diagnosed with mm -hmm. early onset um, Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and yeah. through clinical trials. You must always know what's out there. Yeah. Know ahead of time, not wait for mm -hmm. there to be a situation, an emergent mm -hmm. situation. And then when you're trying to act in in that emotional state, mm -hmm. you don't make the best decisions. Exactly. So it's always good to know mm -hmm. everything that's out there. Exactly. And being educated and, and understanding, even if it's your loved one who has the, the disease or you're, you notice it in yourself, you know, think about it and, and help erase the stigma so you can get that help you need and you, you can get those services that you need. And don't be ashamed because you might need a little extra help. And, and mm -hmm. the the more progressive and the more on top of things you are, you can plan better for the long-term care instead of ending up in a crisis situation. And again, better quality yeah. of life. Yeah. And you have also been working with educating the yeah. police and fire department. Yep. We've been trying to get working with them. We're also going into hopefully some of the schools this um, year. I'm really mm -hmm. excited about that um, and doing a grandma and uh Lucy, Grandma and Lucy, Grandpa and Lucy, we're reading a book and we're discussing it with um, elementary school kids um, and providing them information and stickers and, and mm -hmm. kind of erasing the stigma from the bottom up. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah. And again, uh, with dementia or Alzheimer's, there is that um, wandering. Mm -hmm. And again, planning ahead, mm -hmm. making sure that as soon as you know there's something wrong yeah you know that maybe my loved one is is more forgetful than than usual yeah go to your local police yeah. department yeah. let them know and that way it's it's something that they are already aware mm -hmm. of and should your loved one wander mm -hmm. off it's that much easier yeah. if they know her or exactly. him their name have a photo mm -hmm. 
exactly. any of that. And the Senior Center can help with any of that stuff, too. So you can reach out directly to Barbara at the Senior Center. Um, she has access to all of that information, and she can help with all of that sort of stuff as well. Yeah. And I wanted to plug real quick that the Senior Center is doing a starting a memory cafe in September. So that's really Yay. exciting for both caregivers and those living with dementia. So, um, again, reach out to Barbara at the Senior Center. She was the best contact to get yeah. that information. That is fabulous. Yeah, I'm excited for the town. Um, the memory cafes, I encourage everyone. Yeah. Um, if you're living with someone yeah. with a dementia, that is just, it's a great place to go for the caregiver mm -hmm. because you're connecting with others who are mm -hmm. going through the same thing you're going exactly. through. And also your loved one is connecting mm -hmm. with others. And I know um, the other local senior centers that do offer these memory cafes, there's waiting lists, or so, so they're mm -hmm. very successful and people really, really seem to enjoy them. So I'm really happy for Wilbraham to start this up soon. Well, thank you so yeah. much for joining us. And I do want to let the audience know that they can go to the um, ERC5 website and on our calendar of events, yeah. we post in all of your information sessions yeah. that you're holding. So they're ongoing. It's not just the two that yeah. are happening. Yeah. There's many more yeah. and they can read about it in our newsletter. And you also have a website. So what's um, yeah. a website and the Facebook page? So we page. have a Facebook page. It's Facebook. Dementia Friendly Wilbraham Facebook page. So this is the logo. I don't know if you can see the logo here. Mm -hmm. We're having these resources guides out around town too. So it provides a lot of information. So yeah, we're um, available. So I encourage our, our, um, our viewers to check out the Facebook page because yeah. you can always get an, the yeah. most updated yeah. um, sessions that are out there. Exactly. And we can do private of, private trainings as well. So it doesn't have to be a public training. If so, a company wants us to come in, a larger company or something, we always happen to do that as well. Okay. So be dementia friendly, yeah. dementia and age friendly. Yeah. It's um, it's a good thing. Yeah. It's good for business yeah. Yeah, and it's exactly. good for the customers. Support our initiative and, the community. and support your community members and each other. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thanks. Katie. Appreciate yeah. your being with thank us you so much. today. I appreciate this too. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in for conversations with the ERC5. If you'd like to be our next guest on the podcast, go to our website erc5.com. You can sign up there and you can be the next guest here at Stonegate Studios in Wilbraham.